Alrighty, well, good evening, everybody, and it's cast time once again. Um, and then, um, let me intro this music real quick. Uh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be Warland, uh, Spring Grove, I think that's the name, and then, uh, album's called The Gate, so this is some more, uh, some acoustic music. I think this is one of the first things I played during my stream, so yeah, that sounded pretty good. And, um, I did a copyright check, got it, and checked out, I thought I'd go ahead and play this. So, let me go ahead and go ahead and fire that up. Okay, and um, also, I do, well, I guess it would help, but I'll put my headphones on. So, anyway, um, I need to, I need to kind of preface this uh, by saying I'm just a little bit fucked up right now. Uh, I'm a little bit harried. I went, um, when I was in the pro, when I was, uh, Putting the finishing touches on this cast, I went to the kitchen and get a get a hard boiled egg. Um, I looked at the uh, the hanging glue traps that I have in my kitchen. It, it catches fruit flies. I look over and there's like a fucking brown recluse spider on it, on one of my traps. Like, oh, oh shit! Oh. So so I'm like, uh, oh. I like grab some up. Uh, I grab this really weak bug spray. Like um, it's what you use to kill gnats and fruit flies and stuff. Spray it on the spider. It didn't do much. It just starts moving around the glue, glue trap. It should probably also be said too that uh, the glue traps I use are really old, but I don't, I don't really feel like going out and buying more. And even then, half the time they're empty. So it seems I'm not the only one with a fruit fly problem. But so I, I tend to save mine. But anyway, um, fairly old glue trap, spider on it, um. Spray the spider with the bug spray, and it it just it just, 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 just kind of like it, it 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 I mean it starts moving around the trap. It's it, it I mean it's got a speed. I mean the the trap still works somewhat, so the spider has a speed buff. He can't just take off like they normally do. So it's kind of actually that's the wrong sound effect. Mark. Like you know, it kind of kind of picture of, you know, walking on walking on mud. It kind of sucks. You just a <laughs> same thing here. I mean, spider sitting here trying to walk on this glue trap. It can, can't move very fast. So I had that going for me. And then um, I went over um, since this uh the bug spray I was using wasn't really enough to kill the spider. I went over and grabbed like it was. It was like it it was like raid. Raid Hornet Killer or something like that. It's it's the kind of thing you spray in cracks and crevices and stuff like that. It's supposed to be effective for six months, like the powerful stuff. Grab some of that. Just uh, just squirt some of that right on the spider. And within seconds, the spider plop. So, instant kill. So, but needless to say, my uh, whole kitchen's pretty much it's pretty much smelling like lavender right now, which is gonna. Which is kind of, kind of sucks because uh, fruit flies hate the smell of lavender. So now they're gonna start flying elsewhere. They're gonna stay away from my glue traps. So but anyway, long story short, I'm a little bit messed up right now. Just I'm not a, I'm not full. I don't have a phobia of spiders or anything. Just except maybe like the big ones, and the brown recluse ones. So yeah, a little skittish around them. But anyway, that. Technically, that wasn't part of the cast. I just felt the need to say that, just because it's it's pretty much gonna color everything else I'm gonna be talking about. So, um, but uh, this is another. There's probably gonna be another one where it's either gonna be a really short cast or a really long one. So, and uh, I need to turn the music down from my end. That explains it. I don't know what the deal is with this uh, internal speaker, but you know, even though when I set the volume level to 50, just randomly, out of the blue, it jacks itself up to 100. So, there there we go, much better. But, anyway, for today's stream, um, it's the usual, idle champs. Um, and, um, but uh, yeah, just like I've been doing, uh, just been, uh, running quests. I uh, haven't really done any farming content except at the end of the at the end of each session. But uh, at some point, I can't remember his name, but he's 
He's a pretty seasoned Idol Champs player. I, excuse me, I think he also plays D&D too. But yeah, he was, uh, he was giving me pointers and stuff, and he, he showed me, uh, one system called, uh, called Maldron. Either Maldron or Maldron, I don't know how it's pronounced, but, you know, it kind of, the, uh, it's kind of an upgrade system. It, it works kind of like, um, uh, kind of like the, uh, node system on Final Fantasy X or in Path of Exile. Kind of like that, except, uh, you're, you're laying down pipes. So there's a little bit of, uh, a little bit of got a little bit of Tetris, for lack of a better name. Oh God, there was an old Yahoo Flash game. You had a, you had to connect the pipes from the left to right so you can launch rockets and stuff. I forgot the name of it, but yeah, the the Maldron system in Isle Champs works kind of the same way. You just gotta connect. You gotta. You gotta lay down pipes, you have to connect them to upgrades like extra damage and gold pine and whatnot. So, um, worked on it. So just worked on it, got a few upgrades. And then on top of that, you can also set it up to where, to where uh, you can, you can auto restart. Like it went, you can set it to say level 200. So after, once you've completed 200 levels, you'll automatically restart from the beginning. And I don't have to, I don't have to do this manually. And then on top of that, you can also select what formation to restart each level with. So again, so I don't have to go through the whole trouble and click, 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 you know, you know, you know, getting all getting all the heroes set up and all that and all the auto clickers and whatnot. Um, I could just go ahead and save that and then the game will automatically, you know, restart each each run with that exact setup. So that spared me a huge headache. And then I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea here. Okay. So anyway, um, but yeah, there was that. And like, but like I said, um, just been focusing on quest completion. And I'm like, man, there's a whole shit ton. I think I, I complete, I completed probably 90% of um it's called the grand tour of the sword coast i think that's what it's called it's the very first zone in the game um but like i said i completed 90 percent of them and all of a sudden another sub area opened up called begonia or something like that i can't remember the exact name but yeah there's like a whole there's a whole sub zone and there's a whole bunch of quests and you know a whole bunch of quests in there too I'm like, it kind of occurred to me, like, while I was writing down my blog post, I was like, damn, man, I think there's about, there's more quests in this, just in this one zone alone than there is in, like, Final Fantasy XIV, like, all three, uh, all three starting areas, uh, Limsa, Limsa, or, Limsa, Gradania, and Olda, like, uh, three, three kingdoms, three starting areas, there's, like, more quests in just this one zone in Idol Champs than there is in all those three, all those three starting zones combined. Like, holy shit. Man, I'm... If I'd have, I mean, maybe if I'd have known this sooner, this probably would have saved me a whole lot of potions in the long run. Probably, hell, probably would have saved me a lot of money in the long run. But like I said, nobody was around to tell me this until today. You know? You know, and I, I think I... Uh, I didn't find out until recently that in order to that you have to you have to complete a bunch of subquests called variants in order to access more areas in that zone. I didn't know that. I, I mean, it whenever I whenever I go into a new zone, it gives me a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of quests at once. Okay, I complete those, and then a whole bunch of subquests again called variants. A uh, bunch of those open up. I thought they were optional. So for the longest time, I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking you're just, you just got to complete those three quests and just whoop, move on to the next zone. And granted, um, you have to do uh, some sub quests to unlock the next zone, but it's like, it's not that much. And plus, I think there's only like seven or eight zones in the game. 
So I thought, uh, once I, I think I have all of them unlocked, I figured, well, okay, well, that's it for the game. Uh, but everything else is farming runs since, uh, all the, uh, the sub-quests are such a pain in the ass to do that, you know, it's not even worth the time. Of course, once again, found out recently that I was dead wrong about it, that in order to, in order to unlock additional quests in each zone, you have to do a bunch of, sub, bunch of the sub-quests first, so... So yeah, looks like I'll be in the first zone for a very long time. Because like I said, there's more quests in this first zone than there is in the uh, starting zones in Final Fantasy XIV combined. So. And then, as kind of a kind of a special bonus too, um, a lot more scenery too. You know, you know it's taking you these quests that I'm doing, they're taking you to different places, different locations, different looks, different environments. So, you know, you're seeing a lot more variety and not just the same thing over and over. Well, yeah, but got much more gameplay afoot. And then, um, and there wasn't there wasn't any podcasts that were that were going. Um, there was one that started up right about the time that I was winding down, which I think was around around six ish, six p.m. You know, and more on that more on that time later. But anyway, um, but so because of that, I just um, fired up some D and D Beyond, um, checked out some more of the. Uh, Checked out some more of the rules. Um, just went over them. Uh, something else I was wanting to say about that. I can't remember what. And then I think um, I spent part of my time creating my character, and uh, I and I do need I do need to do this real quick. I totally forgot to do it earlier, so. Now, a funny-looking image might come up. Um, if it if it does, it wasn't intended. I'll try to catch it as quickly as I can. Actually, you know what? Hey, studio mode. Totally forgot about that. So normally, when um when I create my character, when I created my character, I um I used what's called standard array, or array, or however you pronounce it, where uh your attributes are either you you have either 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and eight, your six six numbers, and you can just assign those numbers to whatever attribute. Well, out of curiosity, there's I also did another method. Um, where it's just a standard dice roll, where you roll four six-sided dice, and you discard the lowest one. Um, yeah. And I... I tried that. I did two of them. I... Definitely going with, uh, standard array. I mean... So some rather um rather lopsided groups, I think that's what they call it. So either I think the I think the image was kind of off. Um, kind of need to reverse them, but my first set of my my first attempt, I was practically a freaking demigod, super high numbers. So I figured, man, these numbers are too high even for me. I did a. I did another, I did a, rolled another set. Now the nu numbers are obscenely low, so it's like, man, I shouldn't even bother adventuring with these numbers. Or hell, these are basically first edition numbers. Maybe second. So, 
So yeah, I just stuck with uh, just stick it with a standard array. Or actually, no. There's a there's a third uh, there's a third character creation option called point by, but it it takes a it takes a while to explain. So, but yeah, I think I went with that instead. So, but yeah, it was just uh. One of the things I was doing um, when I was on the uh, the D and D Beyond website. So, um, but uh, later on after the stream, once I got my blog post all squared away and stuff, I played a little bit of uh, Pinball FX3. Uh, I think I uh, did the uh, weekly matchup league. I'm just barely treading water right now. I'm barely out of the red. I think I managed to beat um, one of the one of the tables called Blade. Um, I think uh, I beat the high score on that, like basically on accident. Um, just or I should, yeah, just got a couple lucky shots, got a big, got a got a big big uh, big chunk of a score, and beat the beat the score that I was trying to beat. And so, yeah, so I'm like, like I said, I'm now, uh, my head's above water, but there's still going to be, uh, there's still tomorrow and, uh, tomorrow and Tuesday morning, so. But I'm also, uh, as far as the uh, matchups go, I'm at a point, uh, Sunday, where, um, every, everybody's already playing it, they're all getting their high score, so. I basically I've got a very steep uphill climb if I want to beat any other scores in there because like I said all the the scores in there are pretty high right now because like I said um, everybody's been everybody's been playing and beating each other's scores and stuff like that which makes it a lot harder for me so I'm gonna take another drink Um, but aside from that, though, um, I played it for about 15 or so minutes, and already, um, the, my right thumb was already getting sore and starting to hurt, so, yeah, I definitely had to call it off then. But, it looks like it's gonna be my new reality, though. You know, even for the times where, to the game's credit, um, recently, it hasn't crashed when I started up. So I'm able to play it, but on the downside though, again, because of my hands being the way they are, um, I can only play it for maybe about 15 or so minutes, and then, in this case here, being my right hand, as a, it's starting to hurt. So. So unless something, um, Unless something miraculous happens, um, it looks like uh, it, it does kind of hurt to say this, but um, streaming pinball is pretty much going to be off the table now. But unless I can find some kind of alternative, but like I said, I have to I have to use a controller to play pinball. That's the other thing. I, mouse and keyboard, no freaking way. I tried that with a uh, space cadet pinball. I think I, uh, I was using these shift keys on the on the keyboard. It's just too awkward. Not to mention, I think it puts a uh, it puts a lot of strain on my elbow, on my elbows and or my wrists, because I have to I have to levitate, for lack of a better word, I have to levitate my arms like up in the up in mid air to put you know to hit the hit the shift keys. I haven't really found a more comfortable way to do it. So, but like I said, like like I said, I have I basically have to use a controller in order to play it. But doing that, I can't play it very long because once again my hands will start hurting. So, the most I could probably hope for would be to like do a like a like a 15 minute a 15 minute session or something and record it and then upload it to YouTube or something. But you're all then you're also looking at a, or I'm I'm looking at having to wait at least an hour to get it all uploaded and processed and all that all that on a for just a 15 minute video. And 
if I really suck ass during that 15 minutes, then it's almost a waste of effort. Because then all you're really going to be watching on that video is just me, you know, constant ball drains, constantly missing shots, etc. So trying to uh, trying to record, upload, and process is just going to be a waste of effort. Because you ain't going to want to watch it. Um, and then another thing I need to talk about too, um, I, I think I've talked about it in other uh, cast videos, but I'm just going to say for all intents and purposes, um, this is pretty much going to be a schedule change. Um, I've been saying this before, but, uh, ever since about a couple, two, three weeks ago, uh, we're not allowed overtime, at least on paper, but the way they're doing it now is uh you can't even come in early you can't even come in early if you're if they're going by schedule time not total hours you know I, I think I said this in yesterday's cast video too if um it you know it used to be overtime was anything past 40 hours but I'm on part time I'm not even, I'm not even close to getting 40 hours but yet now they're saying that if you can't even you can't even come in earlier than your scheduled time so if it's 10 to 7 in like in my case you know you know 10 to 7 instead of the usual 8 to 7 I gotta come in at 10 like like yeah I actually came in early and I end up getting my ass chewed by the manager because of it so so again because of that um everything Everything else I normally do is going to start getting shifted over as well. Oh, and it should also be said here too, I forgot to say this yesterday, but um, from 10 to 7, this is nothing new to me. Um, when, I first, when I first got the job at Walmart about 17 or so years ago, this was my schedule, 10 to 7. The only difference was is I was doing this from uh, Wednesday to Sunday, five days a week. But again, I'm, I'm doing part-time now. So now it's just Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So now my lifestyle is even more unsustainable than it was before. So, but like I said, because uh, because I have two additional hours to work with, um, my my schedule is going to start to change as well. Um, uh, my 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 stream time used to be 2.30, it, but now, over time, it's going to start shifting over to 4 p.m., um, and the, uh, when I do these casts, um, yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought here, but yeah, I think when I, when I do these cast videos, um, the, the times that I do them are also going to start to shift, it's, instead of it uh, being between 11 to 11.30, I'm guessing it's probably going to be between 12 to 12.30. And then, um, normally I try, on my nights off, I try to lay down around 4.30 a.m. while it's still dark out. Um, but now, I think it's gonna get pushed back to 5.30 a.m. Because I still, because on my nights off, I still want to lay down early. I still want to lay down while it's dark out. Because when it's dark, um, I fall asleep almost just like that. But on on my work nights, when I you know when I get home from work, it's still you know nice, bright, and sunny. So I actually have a harder time sleeping during those times. So so like like I said, I so normally normally on my nights off, um, when back when I was working full time, I wouldn't lay down until like seven or eight a.m. But like I said, the, the the sun's out and shining and all that, so it, you know, brightness in my window and all that, it makes it a little harder for me to sleep. So, so I, I'm, I only want to, I only want to push the times back for about an hour. So, once again, normally, normally I try to do my cast videos between uh, 11 to 11:30 p.m. Now it's going to be 12 to 12:30 p.m. Normally my um, bedtime on my nights off is uh is around 4.30, 4.30 a.m. Now, it's going to be 5.30 a.m. So, like I said, I still want to lay down while it's still dark out. So. 
And then, um, for my work nights, um, I'm probably gonna have to lay down here <sighs> somewhere. It used to be around 8 a.m. Now, it's probably gonna be 9 a.m. Because, uh, once again, my stream time is, my stream time is, uh, my stream time is gonna start later now. From 2.30 p.m. to 4. So, and then, this schedule change almost came at a good time, in a way, because, uh, because, you know, it's getting towards the end of the year, um, the sun, you know, the sun's gonna, you know, the sun's gonna set sooner, it's gonna say, it's gonna stay dark longer, which, um, which means I'm almost gonna get better sleep, especially now before, uh, daylight savings comes in and the clocks get rolled, Backwards, I want to say. Or maybe forwards. I can't I can't remember which. But yeah. So but what so but once again, kind of a kind of a quick recap on that. Um my my schedules are gonna change. Um for the most part, the times are gonna get pushed back about an hour. So just look for that to happen. And then um one other thing, um I got to close out here fairly soon, but um I mentioned this last week. I totally forgotten about it. Um I didn't remember it until I actually started putting this cast together, but um I'm probably going to continue watching uh watching uh, the resurrection of Jake the Snake. I had started watching it last week sometime. Um never got around to watching more of it until probably today. So yeah. Um, later on this morning, I'll probably end up watching more of that movie. So, well, like I said, I, I forgot to, I forgot to add the visual aspect of it, but so I'll just, I'll just go ahead and mention it here. Uh, but otherwise that's going to do it for me, everybody. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call it good here. And I believe I've said all the things that I wanted to say this morning. So. Uh, but otherwise, hey, thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And then I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow. So, But until then, thanks again for coming by, everybody, and I'll see you all next time.